Hi guys, welcome to my eighth episode of Love the Byte series. My name is Samuel Kamochu, a telecoms and a software engineer, co-founder and the lead presenter at Meliora Technologies. In this episode, my objective is to help you appreciate character sets and character encoding systems. So we'll cover things like ASCII, Unicode, UTF-8, and many more. So in the first episode of this series, I was able to demonstrate that computers communicate in numbers. So every character that we need to send on the network needs to be converted into a number or it needs to be encoded into number. And in this case, we saw how hello can be encoded into uh, the numbers as indicated on the screen. So we say that this encoding is based on an American standard code for information exchange, which is ASCII. And ASCII is a standard by a body called American National Standards Institute. It was created in the 60s and it was meant to help uh, computers share information uh, seamlessly. So ASCII uses seven bits to represent characters. And by now you know that seven bits gives us 128 possible values. And in this case, ASCII table looks as displayed on the screen. So we have all the letters, all the numbers, uh, symbols zero to nine represented. And you can see zero is represented as uh, 48. And then we have letter A to Z in capital and letter A to Z in lowercase. And as you can see, there are many other characters that are visible on our keyboard. So the first 32 characters are called control characters and cannot be printed. Things like uh, carriage return or new line or backspace, those are not meant to be printed on the screen, but they still need to be sent over the network. This was enough in the 60s to represent the English language, which was the language of computing in those days. But as time went by, uh, there was need to accommodate more languages. And computing was a European thing, so it was mainly accommodating the Greek and the European languages. So what solution was provided? The American National Standard Institute decided to extend the ASCII to use 8-bit. That means we have 256 characters. And in addition, we have another 128 characters that can be specified. So the extension is as displayed here. So this was enough to cater for languages like French, Greek languages, and all that. At the same time, other bodies, standard bodies like 3GPP, uh, which is a GSM or a mobile uh, network standard, uh, they came up with their own GSM 7-bit or GSM 0338, which uses 7-bit uh, with a possibility of extending it uh, to 8 uh, bit to cover more characters. So you can see, and this is how characters are represented in GSM 7 bit. Again, it caters for the European characters, the Greek letters, and it caters for uh, our English letters, the numbers, and whatever that you see on the keyboard. In summary, many character encoding systems were developed, and these led to the need for us to have a standard. And of course, the computing started spreading from Europe to other parts of the world, and we needed to cater for Amharic in Ethiopia, Arabic, Japanese, Chinese, and even today we needed to cater for emojis. And this presented an opportunity for us to come up with a solution that covers all, and that is universal code. The universal code, also referred to as Unicode, is by ISO, or the International Organization for Standards. And they came up with a system that could help us address that problem. So Unicode is slightly different from uh, the other character encoded systems that we've covered because all of them have a way of converting numbers from our characters into a numeric or binary representation of uh, those characters. Unicode works differently. It has two layers. So the first thing is we pick all the characters in the universe now and in the future. So the Unicode, or as at times called the universal code system, the work is to assign every character a unique code or what we call the code point. 
please note that this code point is not a binary number. So these code points, for them to be stored on the computer, we need to convert them into binary codes. Or rather, we need to transform the code points to a binary number. If you've ever heard about UCS2, UTF-8, or UTF-16, this is where they come in. So they're basically systems of converting the code points into binary numbers. I hope that helps uh, in differentiating how coding happens in ASCII and how coding happens in Unicode. Now let's look at UCS2. UCS2 is basically using two bytes to represent the characters. As you know, two bytes is a fixed width and that gives us two to the power 16 possible values or rather 65,000 possible values. One thing to note about UCS2, it's not backward compatible. So if you have A in UCS2 and A in ASCII, the two binary codes are not uh, backward compatible. So it has limited spaces. And today it's actually considered obsolete, but uh, the guys in mobile telephony might disagree with you because in GSM, UCS2 is still in use. Now, UTF-8 stands for Unicode Transformation Format, 8 bits. And here we are using the variable width. So the idea is to use 8 bits to represent a character. And if 8 bits are not enough, we use 16, 24, or 32, depending on the character that is being represented. So in total, we can cover about 4 billion characters or 2 to the power 32 characters, which are enough for the characters you have today and the characters to expect in the future. So the good thing about UTF-8, it's also backward compatible with ASCII because letter A in ASCII has an 8-bit number and that 8-bit number is the same as the 8-bit number of that letter in UTF-8. So this brings in some serious uh, advantage. So it saves space. And 95% uh, of the internet uses UTF-8, and it's the default for HTML5. But of course, when you are a HTML developer, you can specify the character set using the meta tags. So JSON and XML formats use this uh, encoding system. So this is something that I'm sure will benefit you if you are trying to build a career in web development. So UTF-16 is similar to UTF-8, it's still variable length. It uses either 16-bit or 32-bit, and it has the same address space, just like UTF-8. It's only that it's not backward compatible with ASCII, and it uses twice storage as UTF-8 or even ASCII. It's more efficient for non-English websites, but if your website has English content, please stick to UTF-8. We also have UTF-32, and I'm not going to cover it in this video, but the idea is something that you can guess. Now, let me give you some uh, representation. When I talk about uh, the variable length. So some characters in UTF-8 can be represented as one byte, like you can see the letter A and lowercase a, zero and nine exclamation mark. These are characters that are already in ASCII and the ASCII code is retained in UTF-8. Now, if you look at this Greek letter, uh, it uses two characters and another Greek letter uses two characters. Then sometimes you have other characters that are represented with three bytes and Chinese characters represented with four bytes. And finally, we have an emoji, which is represented in four bytes. So, and this is, uh, the great thing that letters A and lowercase a, the binary codes are the same as the codes specified in ASCII. And this is what we are calling backward compatibility. So someone might be asking, why is this important? I read this article on Medium uh, in 2018. You can go Google uh, this guy called Apil Tamang. And his argument is, if you don't know, much about these things in this uh, in 2017 or 2022, then you need to be punished. Now, 
again, sometimes some of you will find yourselves in situations where you're building applications. From my experience, I've done applications in messaging, SMS and all that. And this knowledge is important in understanding what happens and troubleshooting some of the issues that you have. So one of the things you'll notice that your app will communicate or, uh, with the SMS gateway using a HTTP API. There we use UTF-8. But now on the network, these guys don't use uh, the GSM, the mobile telephone people don't use uh, UTF-8 for SMS. So you'll find that the network uses GSM-7 bit or UCS2 if the characters are not within the GSM-7 bit range. So, and the SDP has to transform that data to GSM 7 bit, and the SMSC has to forward that data in GSM 7 bit and UCS 2. The key thing is the SDP has to do the transformation. Sometimes you'll hear GSM conversion required or UCS 2 conversion is required. And this is something that is good for you to appreciate. So, the key thing is. If you have message distortion issues where you send a letter A and or a space and it is delivered at as at sign. So if you're troubleshooting such an issue, then this information becomes very uh, important. The other thing is if you're dealing with telco integrations, it will be easier for you with this knowledge because now you know what challenges can happen as far as character encoding is concerned. The other reason is, I know some of you uh, might have heard about a short message, but I have one question. How long is a short message or an SMS? So SMS is basically short message service. The message is the short message. So the common answer is a short message is 160 characters, but I'll put a start to it because of what we've learned today. So if you use GSM 7-bit character encoding, a short message is 160 characters. In total, a short message can only take 120, 1120 bits. So in case you're using 8-bit character encoding system, then you'll definitely have a short message as 140 characters. And if you are using UCS2, if you want to send a Chinese uh, message or even our brothers in Ethiopia with an Amharic, then it means a short message is 70 characters. So this is something that I hope uh, helps you and will benefit you as you build your career in uh, software engineering and probably telecommunication. If you find this content interesting or you believe that this information could be beneficial to someone, please share with them and also feel free to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you very much and see you again in the next episode.